Why? I'm, uh, I'm out here at Land Between the Lakes, an area called uh, Panther Bay. Found a little spot last year that uh, I wanted to uh, try to use as a uh, little backcountry camping and uh, kayaking fishing spot. So uh, today, um, a couple weeks ago I planned this, but today I came out on my kayak with uh, some overnight gear. And uh, I'm going to try to clean up my little newfound camp area and uh, stay the night out here. Um, initially I was going to try to film some of this while I was kayaking out here, but it is much more windy than I thought it was going to be. And uh, with the backpack on the back of the kayak and the wind blowing me around, it was a little tippier than I felt comfortable trying to do extra recording too. So I kind of apologize for that. Maybe another trip. get my gear in and uh, um, I'll start filming uh, cleaning up the little camp area and getting my camp set up and then just the day's activities so that's Panther Bay it's a uh, um, where Panther Creek comes into the Tennessee River and after they impounded it it became a uh, much bigger but I'm on this little point down here towards the end of the bay. Furthest down there is where the Panther Creek comes in. Um, water is actually pretty low out here. Most of this inlet that you see here in the summertime is, uh, is, is underwater, so this little point is more of a point then. But um, I came out here last year and I caught this little, this little gravel bar bank looked pretty interesting. Uh, looks like somebody's crappie bed washed up. There's uh, several hay bales down here and this salt piece of fencing here that might kind of become firewood tonight. Um, and I found this little spot. I found this old fire ring. It looks like it hasn't been used in quite some time. And then uh, this down tree here, just a perfect little spot to sit on while you've got a fire going. But with this wind, I'm not so sure about that. Might be a cold night for me. But it is supposed to be down to 28, so uh, get some other gear. I'll explain later that I want to try out too. So, so uh, I'm thinking I'll take my hammock, string it to this tree, as well as this cluster of trees. Um, that puts me, if I get to build a fire, if the wind dies down, puts me probably 10 feet away from it. Uh, get still pretty close to the water and, and so forth. I want to clean most of this area here you see up and uh, make a nice little camp for later on this year. It can come out multiple times. So. There's that. I'm going to finish bringing my gear in from the my kayak, which is down there, and uh, start getting my little camp cleaned up. I got half of my uh, my fly put up, uh, mostly just to block some of this wind. I wasn't expecting that today, and uh, I'm kind of stubborn. I already had it planned out for a couple weeks that I was going to come out here this weekend, so uh, still pretty weather, just a little windier. Maybe a little chillier too. It's, I think it's only supposed to get up to 50-ish today, and then uh, 28 in the city, so probably, probably 26, 25 maybe here on the water. So uh, I just just wanting to block some of this wind for right now, though. Okay, I've got my hammock set up. Got uh, most of the leaves cleaned up around the, the camp area. Wind's still, still flowing pretty good, but I'm getting little little gusts and stuff. I'm thinking I might be able to have a fire tonight. Maybe, maybe later tonight. You know, after the sun starts going down and stuff. But anyhow, I've got a. I'm, I'm starting to get established here. I've got uh, some snug pack gear um, 
I bought the whole set from from Amazon, the uh, the three piece, the um, oh, what are they? the under blanket, the cocoon, and the over quilt. And I'm gonna I'm gonna set them up. That's gonna be my uh, my insulation for tonight. I've I've tried it once at my uh, my property at the house, and I did pretty good. It got down probably right around the 20, 28, 29 degree mark, and uh, I only used the two pieces. I used the cocoon, and uh, uh, where I started off with the cocoon, and then middle of the night I I added the uh, the over quilt to it, and I, I slept pretty comfortable then. So I think I'll be okay tonight. Um, I'm going to add the extra, um, the under blanket, so that should give me a little bit more insulation from underneath, so it, it shouldn't be as cold convection-wise. But uh, I'm still still new and trying to figure out that uh, that that installation process around my hammock. So I don't want to to try to film it while I'm setting it up, but I will come back um, after it gets set up and and explain more about it. I want to show you. My snug pack equipment. I'm leaving this center flap open at the time being. What I'm probably going to do is uh, find a long stick and uh, raise that up a little bit higher so I can just have a uh, yeah and more of an opening later on this evening. So for right now, I just got it tied down on five ends. But uh, so here's here's this big conglomeration. Of, Insulation here. I've got now if you look right here, there's my hammock and the cocoon uh, completely wraps around the hammock and it's on uh, this little network of shock cords and stuff. So it's it's loose but it's tight if that makes some kind of sense. It's still supposed to have a little bit of a gap. None of your body weight is supposed to uh, be supported by the cocoon itself. It's still just a little layer underneath the hammock but the hammock right here I'm sorry I'm trying to do this and hold the camera so the hammock just sits inside the cocoon okay and then that's yes the end of the quote the, then the cocoon itself let me see if I can do this and hold the camera and if not, I'm, I'm going to do another video on this, this whole system um, later on. But So the cocoon right here zips completely up. So it's, it's almost like you and the hammock are inside a mummy bag. And that's, that's that part of it. Now inside, I have... Inside... Man, I hope this is coming out okay. I'm sorry if it's not. But inside I have the over quilt, which is um, which is really just just that. It's a light blanket-like item. It's uh, it's got little little tabs here um, that you can tuck in underneath you, so it'll hold it hold it in place better. And down here at the foot side, there is. And find the opening of it. And have there is this little foot box right here. So your foot would slide in. Your foot would slide into uh, into that and keep your feet warm. And then on the outside of it, get back out here a little bit. On the outside of it, I've got the uh, the under blanket. And it too is on these little shock cords and somewhat adjustable depending on how you, know, you can pull up some of the slack on the shock cords and such. But oh, here's one I didn't get put on. Um, that's just going to give one one extra layer of insulation uh, under your, the main torso from your, say your shoulders uh, to about your knees. Um, so I'm thinking I'm thinking I should stay pretty warm. It was. I was watching a couple other YouTube videos about it, and uh, they said that it was good to uh, zero degrees Celsius, so that's right at, what, 32 degrees for us, 
So I think I'll be okay, uh, just in case, and I do not plan on using it, but in the event, middle of the night I wake up and I'm just freezing to death, I brought, uh, I brought my poncho liner, and I'm just going to leave it in this bag because I really want to just test out this gear. Um, but nonetheless, uh, I brought it along just in case of an emergency. Um, okay, today I'm going to do a little canteen cup cooking. I'm using a little emergency stove also, and them little, uh, I'm not going to pronounce it right, these are Koglin or Coughlin uh, fuel tabs. i got two of them in there because it's kind of windy. Um, and I, I built up a little wall with some rocks to help block the wind. But what I'm going to do is uh, I've got one of them, uh, you'll see them in the grocery store sometimes. It's uh, in a big green bag. It's a big, big bag of soup mixes. Uh, Bear Creek was the brand that I bought this particular time, and it's a minestrone soup. Uh, I divided that down into four, four sections, so I'm using just just one of that that division. And I've got two cups of water heating up. I'm going to put the soup mix in in just a second. But uh, my wife and I tried it a couple weeks ago and thought it was a really good soup. So that's uh, using the last one for for our lunch today. Um, this has only been on like two or three minutes, not, not a terribly a lot, amount of time, but look at that, it's already, it's already starting to steam, so, so them two tablets, I think I'll, I'll probably wind up putting a third tablet in there for simmering purposes, but it, uh, it's working out pretty good, this little emergency stove. There we go, maybe six, seven minutes into it, look at that. Looks like the carrots are plumping up, and, uh. Some of the beans I just seen roll by there, they're looking pretty good. Won't be too much longer. Alrighty. It's going to be time for lunch. Let's see, I'll put this here real quick. That is steaming hot and I got my stove over here. After lunch I've gonna start getting around cleaning up this camp and it's gonna wind's starting to die down, that's a good thing, so maybe I'll be able to do a fire for dinner. But I think it's gonna be a good little fishing camp for me this spring. Spoonful of stuff. That, well, try to anyhow. See, there's some pasta and beans. Some pasta and some carrots and stuff. It's kind of that is hot. It's very tasty. We like this brand of soup, and uh said we've been gave it a try earlier this year it's, took it a uh, tried it once out in the backyard camping and wife and I hiked down here to this this spot last week just to see how it was looking and uh, we had some soup down here for our lunch that day too so this is the last of it and we got four meals out of a two dollar and change bag of soup so it uh, not a bad investment. It's really tasty. It'll hold me for lunch until dinner gets here, and then also I brought some pretzels. So all I'm gonna do is break them up in little about little one inch pieces and throw them in there to absorb some of that broth and that within a within itself will just make it a little bit more filling. Just wanted to show you around a little bit. Right here uh where the kayak is sitting up till uh 
this darker shadowy spot here is what is usually still underwater. Um, I said we're at winter pool now, so it's a lot lower. But this is uh, Panther Bay. Um, might be able to see where some people We've got some crappie beds sitting out there. Little poles marking them and stuff. That usually is underwater or right at the top of the water uh, come summertime. Um, a lot of the trees are starting to bud out. Down in down in there, it's pretty shallow, and that's where Path Panther Creek feeds into it here. Um, last year, when my wife and I were kayaking out here, we uh, spotted a couple bald eagles uh, flying around and hung out and watched them for a while. That's pretty awesome. And uh, this here is where my little camp is. I don't know how well you can see it back in there. That's, that's me back in there. And now bear with me, it's going to get loud. I'm facing into the wind now. But this, this whole area here is, is Panther Bay. Way up ahead, uh, directly in the center on the other, far side, that's Kentucky. I'm standing in Tennessee here, and uh, I don't know how well you can, you're not going to be able to see it well, but, ooh, ooh sorry about that. Um, just beyond that, that point on the right, uh, back in the days before all this was impounded, there's an island out there, and that was uh, Panther Island. And back during Civil War times, that's where... Uh, Union gunboats came around Panther Island and then started firing on uh, Fort Henry, uh, which was still under construction and, and not over, not defended well. So it, it fell pretty quickly, but that opened up the uh, that helped opened up the deep south to the. Uh, Union Army. It was one of the first uh, Union victories, and then two weeks later they came back here on the other side and uh, attacked Fort Donaldson. So this area has got a lot of history to it. And it's, uh, should be a fun little day.
Well, I've had a pretty good day. I've uh, got quite a bit of firewood split up and uh, got to do a little bit of fishing, watch the birds on the lake for a little while. And I'm getting ready to do my dinner now. Um, just a box of red beans and rice with some uh, uh, andouille sausage I'm going to fry up. Fixing to start my fire. I've got. Oops. Somehow I lost my selfie stick too. I think I buried it in the leaves, but I just got a, some dry grass I went and picked up along the shoreline and uh, some cotton balls I got stuffed in there and just some twigs so I'm going to light up with the uh, ferro rod. Okay, I uh, I finally found my selfie stick. Uh, perseverance paid off. I did bury it in the leaves when I was cleaning up. So uh, anyhow, kind of glad I found it. But uh, I've got a got my fire going. I'm gonna let that burn down with some coals and stuff. But I've got a I'm gonna do a a boxed uh, red beans and rice. And uh, oop, there went one of my rocks. Um, cup of tea. It's starting to cool off pretty good. And I'm going to fry up uh, some andouille sausage uh, in my uh, GI mess kit. But I um, lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah, the, the wind shifted on me. So I made a little rock screen earlier in the day. And uh, it was on the back side of the fire. So now I had to rearrange that and put it on the front. But uh, and this is starting to get together. I'm going to once I start frying up the sausage and stuff, I'll see if I put the camera down and, and get all that going. But Okay, so I've got about seven ounces of andouille sausage here. It's a half of a horseshoe, so I don't want to do my knife. I'm going to go ahead and slice that up into some chunks. And uh, no, put a little bit of Put a little bit of olive oil in my pan. Keep it on the flask. It's an easy way to uh, easy way to tote it out. And probably a little too much, but that's all right. I'm just gonna go ahead and. Get these cut up into some little chunks. There we go. And get my
skillet going here. Alright. And I'm gonna try to let's see, move this guy. How about right under there? Okay. And let me go find my stirring stick. Okay. Really want not wanting the brownies real fast. I was kind of hoping I'd get this little these little sticks right here to hold it level, but Fuck the rock of mines. No, there wasn't the other one. Oh well. I'll put that back up a little bit. Yeah. That's probably more what I want to do right there. Just want to brown these up. Some of that fat off of them and put it in with my uh, rice water. I'm using a uh, I'm using a Piggly Wiggly red beans and rice. It's close to the store. I haven't tried theirs before. Usually I use something more name brand when I'm doing the box meals. But Thought I'd give it a try. They're right down the road. That's a fry bread I was going to make too. A lot of times I get carried away and forget to make my breads. Turned out to be a really nice day. The, uh, for the most part, the winds died down. I'm really thankful for that. I'm, uh, I'm hoping it's not going to be too terribly windy tomorrow. It's, to be honest with you, it's a little scary paddling in here this afternoon, uh, this morning. Um, I've, con I've canoe camped. And uh, that may have been kind of scary too, but just the way the, the weight was on the kayak, and that was the first for me to put a backpack and stuff on the kayak, so that uh, 
just the way the waves hit it and the wind the wind was blowing and the, the way the, the weight was up on the back of the kayak it was just a little a little much so I get used to it anyhow but uh get a couple of these other ones to brown up Whew. I'm gonna take this over here a little bit yeah maybe from the sound of it there's quite a few people coming out here this weekend I keep hearing trucks driving off in the distance Supposed to be a pretty weekend, so I can't blame people for coming out. Hopefully, I get to maintain this spot to myself. Alrighty, I'm gonna go ahead and call these little fellas fried up and. Uh, Set that there. And just kind of set that there underneath those coals. And over here, I'll just keep my fire going a little bit better. Bring the boil, let simmer for 20 25 minutes. Okay, I'm gonna try it this way. This is my uh, fry bread recipe, well, mixture, um, all purpose flour, couldn't tell you how much. I put some uh, powdered buttermilk in there, a little bit of sugar, very small amount, pinch, and a little bit of baking powder, and uh, some salt. And I am to put into it one quarter cup warm water. and one quarter teaspoon of oil. 
So what I'm gonna try to do is just mix it up inside the bag here. Once I find my, oh, there it is. Okay, this is gonna be dangerous. I'm not real good at guessing things, but here we go. Plenty, I think. And borrow a little bit from my tea water, I think. So let's go with. Go with that. And just mix it all up. All right, I'm just going to keep kneading this together for a little bit. And uh, keep working that. Try to get a nice little dough. That yeah, worked out better than I thought it was going to. And less mess on my part. Ooh, okay. Well, so much for that. So I'm just going to sit this right here and call it as done as it's going to be. Okay. So here's what I got. I got this little, this little flattened bread here. And a little bit of oil in my skillet. Going to let heat that back up. That dough ball is supposed to make two, and so there's a second, second one still on the plastic there, but so I
getting there. So that's doing pretty good too. Let's see here. How we looking? Oh, yep. Flip. There we go. Kneecap isn't good. Hmm. Maybe a little too. Yeah, maybe a little too hot over there. Okay, not bad. All right, I am done here. I've got a, I ate on my bread already, so I can't show you that anymore. But I've got the rice. That's right there. And just letting that set up a few minutes so some of that liquid just thickens up. I'm gonna go ahead and build my fire back up because it's starting to get dark again now. And I got a little cup of tea to go with my dinner. So, well, let me take you out to the, before it gets too dark, let me take you back out to the lake. I want to, the sky is starting to get colorful and the water's relatively calm. It was really still a few minutes ago. That uh, works out really well. It looks like a nice little bridge. However, it just takes you right into the briars. So, I think it was really part of somebody's crappie bed that washed ashore. Here we are, back out in the bay. And I don't know how well the colors are going to come out with this camera, but that's going to... That's really pretty. The moon is out already. Let me see if I can get it. It's 
Sorry about all the shakiness. It's gonna be a pretty night. It's gonna be a cold one. Smell the fire. Camp. I'm gonna finish my dinner and then uh, get on the lake and get a little bit of water, do my dishes. Yeah. Guess get ready for the evening. Okay, it's uh, it's getting a little too dark to do any more filming, so. I'm going to go ahead and say goodnight, and uh, we'll give you a report of how the evening went uh, in the morning. So, uh, we, will, uh, we will talk with you all again tomorrow. Goodnight. morning. I had a pretty good night last night. Didn't get cold at all, really. Um, probably went to bed about nine. Curled up inside the little bundle of uh, insulation back there and all my snug pack stuff. And slept really, really comfortable. It's a uh, woke up uh, a time or two just for some noises that were out in the woods or um, peek my head out of the, the snug pack and, and you could feel the draft just being pulled right on into it so it uh, it really it was really quite warm um, never needed my my poncho liner or or anything so it, uh, I think that's going to be a pretty good piece of equipment for me it's a little after six now in the morning I'm getting heating up some water for uh, some grits and uh, a hot cup of tea and then I'm gonna pack up my stuff and uh, hit on home. So I uh, just wanted to give you a quick little update on my Snuggie Pack stuff and uh, be on the lookout. I'm gonna do another video about it um, uh, probably coming up uh, more uh, s specific to it. But uh, I think it passed the test. I had a, a pretty enjoyable evening and I think now I'm just gonna uh, have a little breakfast and uh, listen to the sounds of nature. So uh, until next time, we'll see you in the woods.